Okay, welcome back, you fabulous third graders, uh, you math wizards of uh, virtual room 502. Let's get started with our concept development. Problem one is solve word problems using addition and subtraction. That's what we're going to be doing. Let's read our first uh, problem. A pet mouse weighs 34 grams. That is something we do know. A pet hamster weighs 126 more grams than the mouse. So it doesn't weigh 126 grams. It weighs 126 grams more. Oops, I forgot to put more in there. Than the mouse. So what we got to find out is how much does the pet hamster weigh, and we're going to model this problem using a tape diagram. We don't do too many tape diagrams yet, but let's, let's go ahead and introduce this. So you are copycats. So you're copying along with me on your whiteboard or scratch paper. So let's go ahead and show how much the pet mouse weighs. And the mouse weighs 34 grams, so we're going to make this, and I can even put in a uh, mouse, just so you know that's how much the mouse weighs. Now, what about that hamster, that big chubby hamster, he weighs 126 grams more than the mouse, okay? So we're going to add on that 126. So this isn't what the hamster weighs. He weighs 126 grams more than the mouse. So what we're going to do is we're going to make another bracket up here, and we're going to put hamster. Because the hamster weighs this much more than the mouse. The mouse weighs 34 grams. The hamster weighs this much more, right? Let's just take a look at this. The hamster weighs 126 grams more than the mouse, okay? So there's the mouse, and there's the 126 grams more the hamster weighs in the mouse. So what we're going to do is we're going to say 126 grams plus 34 grams. What I'd like you to do is pause the tape and try to figure that one out on your own and come on back when you're ready. And welcome back. Okay, I'm going to drop down my measurements. Our grams, 6 plus 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 2 plus 3 is 5, right? Plus 1 is 6. Bring down the one, so our hamster weighs 160 grams. The hamster weighs 160 grams. Okay, if you need to pause, go ahead and pause so you can write all this down. I like you to get in the habit of writing your answers as a sentence, so go ahead and pause if you need to. Let's go to number two. Robert's creative tools weighs 12 kilograms. That's something we do know. He takes his power tools out. That's something we also know. Now that the now the crate weighs four kilograms. That's something we also know now. And how many kilograms do the power tools weigh? Okay, so let's take a look at this. Here's his toolbox. Okay, we got his toolbox there, and it weighs 12 kilograms. And I'm going to abbreviate kilograms, okay? So let's set that up. This is the toolbox. It weighs 12 kilograms, okay? He takes out the power tools, and now it only weighs 4 kilograms. So these are all the tools except the power tools, all right? So now we know that this is what we don't know, and this is what the power tools way okay so we need to find this out how are we going to go about doing this i want you to think about it maybe you already know but if you don't follow along we're going to take 12 kilograms the total weight of the toolbox there's creative tools and we're going to subtract this amount and that will let us know the weight of the power tools So go ahead and pause the tape and do the math on your own. And welcome back. Bring down the measurements, the unit of measurement. And then we can say, okay, 12 minus 4. You know, when you think about this, and I'm going to make a little place value chart. We have our 1s and our 10s. So we have two 1s and one ten. right? That's 12 kilograms. 
I can't subtract four from two, so I'm going to have to decompose that and make one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten ones. Now I can subtract four. One, two, three, four. What do I have left? Two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? I appreciate you guys. So the tool, the power tools, weigh eight kilograms. And there we have it. Okay, we'll do one more before we take a little break. This one was kind of a tough one. So we're going to do a huh? So Judith squeezes 140 milliliters of lemon juice to make one liter of lemonade. And I thought to myself, but how can you make one liter of lemonade with only 140 milliliters of lemon juice? Well, of course, you add water to lemon juice to make lemonade. It says how many milliliters of lemon juice are in two liters of lemonade? So one liter has 140 milliliters. Two liters has, um, we're going to find out. So what will we do? Let's take a look here and just visualize that this is a liter of lemonade and it has... Uh, 140 milliliters of lemon juice. So now let's look over here. We'll make we're copycats. Remember, I'm not going to draw the cat. You guys should know this by now. So there's 140, but now I have a two liter jar, so I need to put in another 140. So I know that each of these are 140. Whoops, I'm run off. 140. They're each 140 milliliters. M L M L. Okay. So what do we need to do? Well, of course, all we need to do is add those two up to figure out how much is in two liters of lemonade. So go ahead and pause the tape and welcome back. Okay. Drop down the M L. 0 plus 0 is 0, 4 plus 4 is 8, and 1 plus 1 is 2. So we could say there are 280 milliliters of lemon juice in 2 liters of lemonade. So what we did is we had... 140 milliliters to make one liter. So now we have two liters. Judith is going to have to squeeze out another 140 milliliters of lemon juice. All right. Okay. You need to pause the tape if you have to do that. Go ahead and do this and get that all down. I really want you to get in the practice of writing problems in a sentence and take a little break, maybe a little three or four minute break. Get some water, get a bite to eat, use the restroom, say hello to the people in the house, and then come on back. This is the awkward part where I wait for screencast divide to stop recording. <laughs> 